Bristol is a young city, even by the standards of American cities. But these mountains are some of the oldest in the world. The Cherokee were here before the Europeans, but who was here before the Cherokee? This is a ceremony to honor a Civil War veteran who was a Bristol native. The man was John Emmert, a Confederate soldier. During the war, Emmert was wounded with an injury to his leg that would distress him for the rest of his life. But his Civil War service is not why this ceremony is taking place. Emmert worked for the Smithsonian Institution as part of the Bureau of American Ethnology's Mound Survey Project. The Smithsonian recognized the importance of the Native Americans' mounds that were found all over the eastern United States. Much like the Egyptian pyramids, they had been used for both ceremony and human burials. And much like the Egyptian pyramids, they contained invaluable artifacts that explained more and more about the ancient cultures that lived in this part of the country as far back as 3,500 years. Emmert was a meticulous record keeper and had a talent for sketching the various archaeological digs which he often supervised. In 1889, he was working on a site which contained three mounds, one large mound located on the east side of Bat Creek near Loudoun, Tennessee, and two other small mounds which were on the west bank of the same creek where Bat Creek intersected the Little Tennessee River. Mound one, the largest of the three, was determined to be a structural mound which at one time supported a building, probably for ceremonial purposes. But the mound contained no skeletal remains and thus contained no artifacts. The mound too is constructed around a limestone rock vault. In total, the mound contained 17 skeletons, but the artifacts were scarce and Emmert finally claimed only a small metal button and two buckles. But mound three would contain artifacts that would eventually cause a huge controversy. The mound contained nine skeletons, Unlike Mound 2, these skeletons had been carefully placed. Seven placed side by side with their heads pointed north, and the other two placed nearby with one head pointing north and the other pointing south. It was one of these two skeletons that was associated with a small treasure trove of artifacts. There were two brass bracelets, a drilled fossil, one bead, a bone that might have been a crude wind flute, small polished pieces of wood, and an engraved stone. Since the mound was so close to water, all the artifacts were damp. And there was that stone. The stone had been found under the skull of the skeleton, and the characters carved into the stone were considered to be Cherokee, but there was a problem. The Cherokee written language was only 69 years old, having been invented by Sequoia in 1820, when the stone was found and the characters did not look like Cherokee writing. And there was an even bigger problem. No one believed that the mounds that were being unearthed were only 70 years old, so why was this stone there and what were these strange characters? Emmert had a rocky relationship with the Smithsonian and had lost his job with them, but was rehired to work on this project. He believed the mounds to be early Cherokee, so if the writing would have been Cherokee, it would have reinforced his theory, but it wasn't Cherokee. John Emmert came back to Bristol and finally died and was buried near this monument that was being dedicated on that cold November day in 2011. The artifact from his Back Creek Mound was placed in the Smithsonian's basement in a box and forgotten. In 1964, Henrietta Mertz, a U.S. patent attorney, rediscovered the stone while researching possible pre-Columbian contact with travelers from Europe or even Africa. She looked at the stone, read what notes there were, and realized that if the stone was rotated 180 degrees, the characters once thought to be Cherokee were very similar to early Phoenician. She took the stone to Cyrus Gordon, one of the top scholars of such things, who determined by 1970 that the inscription was early Hebrew, dated around the first century AD. The Smithsonian immediately declared the stone to be a fake. So the work of the Bristol native, John Emmert, was called into question. Did he create and plant this artifact to try to impress his bosses at the Smithsonian, or even to advance his theory that the mound builders were actually Cherokee? And if he did, why would he have carved very early Hebrew on the stone? By the 1980s, carbon-14 dating had become accurate, but a stone couldn't be dated. It had to be an artifact that had once been a living thing in order for the process to work. The stone couldn't be dated, but the small pieces of wood could be dated. 
The results came back and were determined that the wood had been a living tree sometime between 100 A.D. and 700 A.D., long before the Cherokee lived here and certainly long before John Emmert was digging in the mounds along Back Creek. Of course, the stone could have been planted by Emmert. It wasn't dated, so there's no real way of determining when the stone was carved. Or is there? This is Scott Walter. He is a forensic geologist. He's an expert of determining the weathering and thus the age of carvings in stone. And the bottom line is, is that the weathering of the inscription is very old. And the only way that that could happen is because it's documented that it was found in 1889. The only thing that has changed on that stone since it was discovered is that sometime between the picture that was taken in 1891, there's two scratches on the stone, they're not there. But in 1970, the stone is published in Argosy Magazine. They did an article about Cyrus Gordon's work and those scratches are there. And it turns out during my examination, those scratches were freshly made. They created a geologic profile that was totally inconsistent with the original inscription. And in fact, it was the key piece of evidence that gave me the confidence to say, there's no reason to question the veracity of this discovery. John Emmert did not do anything that he has been accused of doing. And this is a genuine, legitimate artifact that, was, that has been in that mound as least, is at least as old as when those people were placed in the mound because it was under the skull of that deceased person. And there were those two brass bracelets. The bracelets were, that were found with the artifact were also tested for metal content. And interestingly enough, they contained copper, zinc, tin, and lead. Rarely do you see lead, but the lead was put in there to give the metal more malleability. But the ratio of the two bracelets, together with samples that were tested of first and second century Jewish bronze work in the Mediterranean were so statistically close, it's unbelievable. The Back Creek Stone, as it's now called, is not the only artifact that's been found to contain Semitic inscriptions. I've looked at many things across this country. There is a myriad of artifacts and sites, pre-Columbian artifacts and sites that date back thousands of years um, from people that were here from other continents, mostly from across the Atlantic, but people came across the Pacific as well. But how on earth could people from the Middle East have made the trip to East Tennessee around the time of Christ? About the same time that Cyrus Gordon was publishing his findings that the writings were early Hebrew, a Norwegian explorer named Thor Heyerdahl was launching his second expedition to prove that man could sail a boat made from only materials found in the Middle East in ancient times using the Canary Current to travel from North Africa to the New World. Heyerdahl succeeded and the papyrus boat which he sailed now sits on display at the Kontiki Museum in Oslo, Norway. But just because it could be done doesn't mean that it was done. And even after the Atlantic crossing, it's still an incredibly long voyage to end up on the banks of the Little Tennessee. I'm not an archaeologist, so I'm not qualified to make conclusions, but in researching this story, one thing kept bugging me. Most sources say that Native Americans crossed over from Asia on a land bridge that connected what is now Alaska to Siberia. But the race of people that are now called the Mound Builders seem to have originated from the deep south along the banks of the Mississippi River. Mounds in Louisiana have been dated to be the oldest and the mounds further from the Mississippi Delta are known to be the latest. So where did these people come from if they migrated not from Siberia but from the Gulf of Mexico? The location of the Back Creek Mounds is now under several feet of water under Teleco Lake. And of course, John Emmert has been dead for over 100 years, so we may never know the truth about the Back Creek Stone. So was this small stone that was discovered by this Bristol native a fake or one of the greatest discoveries ever made on this continent? You decide. If you have a story about Bristol lore that you think would be interesting to our viewers, please contact us at jdunham at bristoltn.org or call at 423-764-4171. This has been Jack Dunham for BTN TV.